Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. King Khufu, also known as Cheops in Ancient Greek, is one of the most talked about pharaohs in ancient Egyptian history due to his association with the Great Pyramid. But in terms of archaeology and history, there is very limited information about him. For a man who is supposed to have built the Great Pyramid, the most incredible human accomplishment of all time, why do we know so little? Although most believe that the Sphinx is way older, many alternative researchers do actually believe that the Great Pyramid was the work of Khufu. Because, as the great John Anthony West pointed out many times, if you actually observe the Khufu graffiti above the King's Chamber, it was clearly painted before the blocks were laid. This subject of the age of the Great Pyramid is of course an ongoing debate, but for the purpose of this specific video, I'll assume that John Anthony West is correct. So, what do we know about Khufu? History states that he was the second pharaoh of the 4th dynasty in the first half of the Old Kingdom period, ruling in the 26th century BC. He succeeded his father, Sneferu, preceded Khafre, but his reign is very poorly documented. There are a few inscriptions from Giza that mention Khufu, including the famous inventory stealer, but we actually get most of our information from Egyptian and Greek historians who lived around 300 BC. That's more than 2,200 years after his reign. This therefore offers a number of problems. These later chroniclers such as Manetho, Diodorus Siculus and Herodotus all portray Khufu in a very negative light. Manetho was an Egyptian high priest, scholar and historian, and referred to Khufu as Sufis. He says that Sufis was the second king of the 4th dynasty, reigned for 63 years and that he erected the Great Pyramid. Manetho also states here that Herodotus says Cheops built the pyramid. This either implies he believes that Sufis and Cheops were two different people and Herodotus was wrong, or that Cheops is the Greek name for Sufis. Manetho states that Sufis was disdainful of the gods, but what really interested me though was the next line. He says that Sufis composed the sacred book, and interestingly, Manetho says he acquired the book because it contained a great treasure. The names of the 4th dynasty kings recorded by Manetho differ greatly to how we know them today. Instead of Sneferu, he says Soris. Then there is Sufis I and second instead of Khufu and Khafre, followed by Mencheres for Menkore. It misses out Jadefere, and after Menkore, the rest of the king's names vary greatly to how we know them today. Different versions of the works of Manetho, such as the Armenian version of Eusebius, say the third king, the second Sufis, was actually the builder of the Great Pyramid. Interestingly, Manetho says that there was no achievement worthy of mention by the other pharaohs, which is strange as we are told that Sneferu, Khafre and Menkore each built significant pyramids during their respective reigns. But anyway, historians today believe that Sufis, Khufu and Cheops are all one and the same person. Like in the reign of Manetho Sufis, the grandfather of history, Herodotus, states that the reigns of Cheops and Kephron, aka Khufu and Khafre, were turbulent times, saying, The Egyptians so detest the memory of these kings that they do not much like to mention their names. Hence, they commonly call the pyramids after Philitian, a shepherd who at that time fed his flock about the place. This is an important piece of information, yet appears to be a throwaway comment from Herodotus. A man owned flocks around Giza at the time of the pyramid's construction and the Egyptians attributed the building of the greatest structure the world has ever seen to this man. Surely the Egyptians could have simply rewritten the history of the pharaoh or claimed it was the work of a high priest or a prince. But no, according to Herodotus, the Egyptians said the pyramids were the handiwork of a local shepherd, whose name suggests he was a Philistian, a man who came from or was located in Philistia, modern day Palestine. Richard Proctor, a famous astronomer, said that this reads like a strange misinterpretation of a story related to Herodotus by Egyptian priests. Before we pursue Khufu any further, we need to take a closer look at this local shepherd. There is a period of Egyptian history where the Hyksos, which some translate to mean the Shepherd Kings, came into Egypt and lived and ruled in the eastern Nile Delta region and Middle Egypt for a limited time, sometime in the 15th dynasty. The rule of these kings overlapped with the native Egyptian pharaohs of the 16th and 17th dynasties, better known as the Second Intermediate Period. 
The writings of Manetho, Josephus and others talk of the Shepherd Kings, but many historians and antiquarians believe they are not talking about the events of the 15th dynasty, but actually something that took place in the 4th dynasty. The historian Josephus quotes Manetho and says there was a period in the Egyptian past when, by peaceful means, some shepherd kings had the Egyptian rulers in their hands. According to the book Miracle of the Ages The Great Pyramid by Worth Smith, Herodotus met Manetho and they spoke at length through an interpreter. Manetho informed him that the architect of the Great Pyramid was Philitian, of a people known as the Hyksos, or the Shepherd Kings. The book goes on to claim that Manetho told Herodotus that eventually the Shepherd Kings, having completed the Great Pyramid, eventually migrated eastward into Judea and founded the city of Salem, which later became Jerusalem, the Holy City. Apparently, throughout the building of the Great Pyramid, it is claimed by Worth Smith that the mysterious old patriarch of the Hyksos, known as Philitian, grazed his enormous flocks and herds in the immediate vicinity of the Pyramid Project, showing great interest in its building and was often consulted regarding some features of it. So, to bring this information all together, the 4th dynasty king who built the pyramid, according to ancient historians, was Khufu, Cheops or Sufis. Three different names but were all the same person, and he was in charge of building the Great Pyramid. But it looks as though it was under the guidance of a shepherd king from the east, and he was known as Philitian. Worth Smith says that the shepherd king Philitian worshipped the one true god. So maybe it was his influence over Khufu or Sufis that caused him to shun the gods. As stated, Herodotus says that when Cheops, the Greek name for Khufu, became king, he brought the people every kind of evil, shutting all the temples, stopping ritual sacrifice, and made the Egyptians work for him and his building projects. He says that for 10 years they made preparations, including building the causeway, and then 20 years building the pyramid using machines to lift heavy blocks. He also says that the king forced his daughter into prostitution in order to raise the funds for the building project. If this Philitian brought monotheism into Egypt, influencing Khufu in the 4th dynasty, it is very interesting because in my previous video I explained that the Sphinx also portrays the monotheistic god, the same god that Akhenaten brought back in the 18th dynasty. But is there anything else written about Khufu that seems to back up the claims he was influenced by an outsider? Apart from everything stated so far, most of what we know about Khufu comes from the West Car Papyrus. Interestingly, the five stories written on 12 rolls of papyrus were written during the later Hyksos period. The West Car Papyrus certainly paints Khufu in an interesting light. There is, and always has been, an element of intrigue and mystique around Khufu. And, as I stated in my previous video looking at the Sphinx, I believe that Khufu was the first monotheistic dynastic pharaoh, but historic accounts seem to infer he was influenced. This makes sense if he was to implement such drastic changes. The ideas had to come from somewhere. In the West Car Papyrus, there is a story called Khufu and the Magician, told by his son Hardadev. He tells his father of a magician named Jedi, who has the power to reattach a severed head and can tame a wild lion. But most interestingly, he also claims that Jedi has information regarding the Temple of Thoth, another name for the famous Hall of Records. Khufu orders Hardadev to bring Jedi to his court, and there he questions him on his knowledge of the temple. Jedi claims that while he does not know the number of rooms in the temple, he does know where they are. He says there is a flint box in a room called the Inventory in Heliopolis, and the information is in that box. Jedi can't bring the box to him, but he says that the eldest of three sons, born to Regided, the wife of a priest of Ra, will bring it to him. It is said that the eldest son will become chief priest at Heliopolis. The story leads into the next West Cop Papyrus tale about the birth of the three sons, but due to an incomplete papyrus, we do not know how the saga ends. Did Khufu actually gain the knowledge of the Temple of Thoth? Is this the basis of the Sacred Book of Sufis, aka Khufu, talked about by Manetho? Was Jedi the man that Herodotus called Philitian? Jedi is described as a commoner of extraordinary age, endowed with magical powers and talented in making prophecies. He ate 500 loaves, a shoulder of meat, drank 100 jugs of beer, can reattach heads to bodies and can tame lions. He could also perform other miracles and wonders. 
Jedi brings a number of magic books with him to meet the Pharaoh, reattaches the head of a goose to its body, as well as that of a waterfall and an ox. Khufu sets Jedi up with an allowance, food and drink, and said he could live in the house of Prince Hordadev. Jedi does say that the eldest son of Regidet would become chief priest of Heliopolis, and the next story says that Khufu was still king when the three children of Regidet were born. So maybe Khufu did find the Temple of Thoth, which is believed to be the so-called Hall of Records. By all accounts, Khufu did change the state religion of Egypt, and it is possible he was the first monotheist in ancient Egyptian history. Accounts say he built the Great Pyramid under the influence of a shepherd king from the east, who could be the same man who influenced Khufu's change in religion, and therefore the Great Pyramid could be a symbol of this monotheistic religion. This man could well be the magician from the West Copper Papyrus, who knew how to find the Lost Hall of Records. Khufu then went on to write a sacred book, a book which Manitho eventually went on to own hundreds of years later. There is no mention of this sacred book in any later works, and it seems to have disappeared from history. But I have a feeling that this book holds the answer to all the things we are looking for regarding the history of the pyramids of Egypt. Very little remains from Khufu's reign, and the only complete statue we have of him is one small representation made of ivory, where the rest of his statues, stealers and works of art all destroyed. As stated in my last video, this sounds all too familiar when you study the aftermath of Akhenaten's rule in the 18th dynasty. Khufu was clearly a heretic king when compared to the other pharaohs, and the Egyptians seemed to have wanted to erase him from history. The cult of Khufu did live on and re-emerged in later dynastic history, as is evident with the West Car Papyrus, but his legacy is not one of a master builder of the greatest wonder of the world, but of a despot who shunned the gods and was influenced by an outsider. To close this video, going back to the West Car Papyrus, it's said that the outsider, the magician Jedi, could tame lions. Well, maybe this is a subtle reference to the giant acre lion on the Giza Plateau, the Sphinx. I have just launched a new YouTube channel called Space and Planet, which looks at Earth and space science news, as well as independent scientific research from around the world. Please subscribe now to give my new channel a head start, I have placed a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.